In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth. Fiat. So what we'll do is we'll we'll finish this about quarter of. We'll do the final blessing. Uh, we'll bless all the rings, bless everything in the in the whole room, uh, and then we'll do the anointing. And when we begin the anointing for anybody who wants to be anointed with the oil of Louisa. Um, can you help start putting this room back in order? Um, and that would be a big help to otherwise Colleen is going to have to do it all by herself. And we did it to her last year, so we don't want to do it to her this year. So, okay. so we'll begin on uh, the bottom of page six. April, uh, volume 21st, April 12th, 1927. Poor daughter Louisa, courage. Now this is important. These were the first words of Pope Benedict. He said, courage, you must be courageous. Those are the very first words that Benedict gave to the world. Like John Paul II's word, words, first words were basically, do not be afraid. And these are two things you have to understand. They both read, you know, the, the third secret of Fatima. You know, and they said, you must be courageous and you cannot be afraid. And so, you know, here's a very, very powerful words from uh, two great pontiffs that we've had. You do not know everything about what it means to live in my most holy divine will. It's possessive, per, it possesses perfect balance and all of its attributes are in the highest concord. Nor is there any of them inferior to any other. And when it is necessary to punish the peoples for their sins, my justice demands these voids that you be without me, so as to be able to balance itself by shedding the scourges they deserve. Therefore, it puts you as though aside in my divine will, and it follows its course. Now, what does this mean? Jesus uh, would say to Louisa, I have to punish the world. And Louisa would say, punish me. Don't punish the word. And this is why Jesus crucified Louisa again and again and again. Every day he crucified Louisa. So Jesus says, hey, to get the balance here, you know, I'm going to have to punish the world. And, and therefore, I'm going to not get near you to hear you say to me, punish me. I'm not going to reveal to you that I'm going to punish. So what we see is uh, the love that Louisa has for us. And this is why you're, you're going to uh, understand Louisa as our little mama. Uh, you know, we have Mother Angelica, we have Mother Teresa. Jesus says to us, here's your new mother, your little mother, who uh, is going to teach you how to live in the divine world. She possessed it. 
and she will teach you how. So uh, he would not reveal himself to Louisa and he would scourge the earth. And this is volcanoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, tidal waves. He's saying to the earth, you know, reprimand mankind. So Jesus says, how many times did my moaning humanity find itself with these little hitches of my divine justice that and had to surrender for the love of the balance of my will? Would you want, uh, as I keep you in the divine wellness, to unbalance the order of my divine attributes? No, no, my daughter. Let my divine justice follow its course, and your Jesus shall be as before always with you. Do, don't you know that in my divine will you must go through what my holy humanity went through? As my holy divine will was so very demanding and inexorable with me for the sake of redemption. The same for you. It becomes demanding and inexorable for the sake of the kingdom of my supreme fiat. So this is why my holy humanity hides from you, Louisa. Because I want my divine justice to follow its course and to maintain its balance. So uh, there were a few times when Jesus said to know, Louisa, uh, I can't hold back my wrath. And now that Louisa's in heaven, I, I know she's praying to God that the children of the divine will not be affected. And, and it's, not that, it's not that God doesn't love everybody. But he says, if you're, if you're a child of the divine will, if you're reading the volumes, if you're, if you're putting into practice these truths, I can't punish myself. Because it's Jesus. But there's many people that don't want to read. There's many people that say, well, this is no big deal. Or there's many people that say, Oh, I like, I like, some people have said to me, I like these other readings. And God says, fine. I mean, I can't force people to, to begin to read because as you read, your whole life changes because it's Jesus in you. And Jesus says, I can't punish myself. So the little children of the Holy Divine Will cannot be punished. And that doesn't mean we don't sin. It means that we're striving to live the life of Jesus, to live the life of Mary in the divine will that God gave to no one but Louisa. St. Joseph lived in the presence of Jesus and Mary, living in the divine will, the new Adam and the new Eve, but he wasn't the newborn. And this is what we have to understand. Joseph is a great saint, one of the greatest, protector of the church, uh, but he did not live in the divine will. He did the will of God, as all the saints did the will of God. But you see, to do the will of God, and say, for example, St. Teresa is washing the dishes. She says, I'm going to do the will of God, I'm going to wash the dishes. So she's washing the dishes. If God looks down and says, well, there's little Teresa doing my will, isn't she good? It's a difference than when Louisa would do the dishes in the divine will. When Louisa did the dishes in the divine will, Jesus looked down and the Father looked down and said, there is Jesus washing the dishes in Louisa, washing the dishes. This is a divine act. This will go on for all eternity. How glorious is watching my son washing the dishes through Louisa's hands. Doing, not doing the will of God, but living in the will of God. There's a vast difference. And as we grow in the knowledge of the divine will, Jesus shows us, I'm tired of what the saints have done. That might sound harsh at first, but he says, I want my children to live divinely in the divine will. That's why the book that came out last year on becoming children of God is so important. If you don't understand divinization, that's what St. Augustine says. St. Augustine says either you're going to be demonized at the end of your life or you're going to be demonized. You're either going to have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and intimately one with him, or you're going to have the devil as your personal Lord and Savior. It's The intimacy with Jesus is essential. This is what God wants. This is what God desires. And the only way you can be intimate with Jesus Christ is by receiving him in the Blessed Sacrament. That's it. Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity becomes our food. How glorious is this? This is, this is God so in love with his children. 
How many, he says very clearly, uh, did I finish that last paragraph? Okay, thanks. Sorry. My mind is gone. See, I'm going to plead insanity. That's what I'm going to do. I, I said that to a priest once. I said, you think God will accept me if I accept him now? He's not gonna he's not gonna take that as anything. Okay, volume twenty four first, May twelfth, nineteen twenty seven. I was feeling oppressed, not only because of the privation of my sweet Jesus, because he again he was hiding himself because he was punishing the world. Uh, but because of the continuous threats of grace chastisements and the nearing of wars and revolutions, the infernal methods so as to be horrifying. Oh God, what pain to be forced by supreme power to see these evils the blindness of the leaders of the nations who want the destruction of the peoples, and my impotence in being able to stand before the divine justice with my pains to make the people be spared so many evils. So I felt the weight of life, and I ardently longed for the celestial fatherland. She just says, let me go to heaven. I, I, I see what's coming, she says. And since I could not arrest the course of so many evils with my pains, and my beloved Jesus moved into my interior, told me my daughter Louisa... How do you think I would have done I would have done more if I had freed the people from the chastisements they deserve because of the so many sins or by being formed uh, the redemption? The chastisements were temporary pains. The redemption was an eternal good that never ends. I, God, had freed them from the chastisements. I would not have opened heaven for them, nor would I have given the right to glory. On the other hand, by forming the redemption... I, Jesus, opened heaven for them. I, Jesus, placed them on the way to the celestial fatherland, giving them the lost glory. When one must do a greater good, he must content himself with putting the minor good aside. Now, this is important for us. If you are intending to do the greater good, which is to live in the divine will, you must content yourself with putting aside the minor good. That's why Jesus says, I want to wean you off the prayers of the saints. The prayers of the saints are good and holy and saintly. Jesus says, I'm going to give you powerful prayers to lead you through what's coming. I'm, I'm going to... And so he says, you have to content yourself with putting the minor goods aside. More so, since the minor was to serve the balance of justice and my humanity could not nor I did not want to oppose this divine balance. Furthermore, the chastisements were to serve as a call for the creatures, as a speaking voice, as sentries, in order to shake them from the sleep of sin, as a spur, in order to place them on the right way, as light, in order to lead them. Therefore, they were also means in order to make them receive the goods of redemption and I did not want to destroy these helps. This is why, in spite of my coming upon the earth, the peoples were not completely exempted from the chastisements they deserve. Volume 21st, May 24th, 1927. When the creature came out of our volition, when Adam was born, it is the justice that she walks the steps of our will, and that she returned to her creator the same path from which he came, beautiful and all enriched by the prodigies of our eternal fiat. So Jesus is doing that with us. To be born again is not how the Protestants talk. To be born again, as the creature came out of our will, it is divine justice that the soul walk in the steps of our divine will. That's reading the volumes. That the soul return to her God on the same path from which he came, which was from the divine will. That means to become all beautiful and all enriched by the prodigies of the eternal fiat of God. This is what God is at doing with us right now. He is forming a divine masterpiece. He's, he's, he's doing a divine masterpiece in us. We say to Jesus, fiat, let it be accomplished. Let it be done. He says, okay, this is how it's going to work. Read. And as you read, go to your room, close the door, and pray. As you read this, Jesus is changing you. 
he's sculpting. I mean, have you ever sculpted anything out of stone? It's a mess. You get p powder and dust all over the place, but you just keep on pounding until something appears. That's what Jesus is doing to us. Sometimes it's like, Lord, I, I enough already. He's saying, I'm not done. You're a tougher stone than I thought you would be. And I'll tell you, it's, it, he, if we allow him, he will form a divine masterpiece in us. Not just to be good and holy and saintly, but a divine masterpiece that will put all of heaven in awe. As he says here, all beautiful, all enriched by the prodigies of the divine will of the, of the eternal fiat. Volume 21st, May 26, 1927. The sanctity of my divine will is divine sanctity. I said that to Cardinal Burke. I said, <laughs> I said to him, I said, uh, I, my question was, I've been writing to him for a long time, sending him stuff, you know, and I was thinking, well, he's got to be reading it. He writes always a nice note back. And uh, so when I saw him like, two years ago, I said, does it mean that we were going to have another ontological change? We're ontologically changed at baptism. No longer are we sons and daughters of Adam. We are ontologically changed sons and daughters of God. Through ordination, a, 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 a priest is no longer a lay person. He is ontologically, ontologically changed as a, another altar Christus. So I said to the cardinal, I said, is, is when, when we enter into the divine will, is there going to be another ontological change? And he looked at me and he goes, well, he says this, he says, Jesus produced the saints, the sanctity of the, of the sacraments in order to, I said, I, I understand that all. I cut him off, which I shouldn't have done. And I said, Jesus says, this is the sanctity of sanctities. I said, and I had it right in my hand. I said, it's even greater than the sanct sanct sanctity of the Eucharist. And he sat up and he goes, let me see that. <laughs> I said, well, it's for you, Your Excellency, Your Eminence. So I handed it to him. And what does that mean? How can God be greater than God? I, so I was telling him this. I said, the, the, the divine will, the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and the divinity of Christ. It is God Almighty, worthy to be worshipped. How can this divine will be greater than the Eucharist. I mean, that's what he was asking. And I said, Jesus says, when we receive the Eucharist, for 15 minutes, Jesus is alive in us. He's body, blood, soul, and divinity. The living presence of God Almighty in a mystical way is alive in us. And when the host dissolves, the, the real presence of Christ is, is gone. I mean, we, we adore him and love him and praise him. But the Eucharist has been dissolved. Jesus says the divine will is perennial communion with God, never ending. And he looked and he, he just said, let me read that. <laughs> and it was, it was really good because I'll tell you, his suffering that he's going through is very important for him and for the church. Very, very important. But what he saw with what he understood with Louisa is this is the sanctity of sanctities. It's not the sanctity of the saints. The sanctity of the saints is human sanctity. They, they receive what they got through their mortifications for their penances, for their sufferings, for their martyrdoms. Jesus says, no, I want you, and that's us, linked to Louisa, to go through the martyrdom of martyrdoms more than what the saints went through. And he says, you know what the martyrdom of martyrdom says? It's to say fiat. Not my will, but your will be done. I didn't want to breathe in my human will ever again. I want you, Jesus, to breathe in my breathing. I don't want to be, have my heart beating in my human will ever again. I want you, Jesus, to beat in my heart beating. The martyrdom of martyrdoms, the consequence of martyrdom of martyrdoms is peace, joy, and happiness. That's what God has planned for each and every one of us. Peace, joy, and happiness. As you take a deep breath in, it's Jesus breathing in our breathing. It seems like you're doing it. It feels like you're doing it, but no. You've, martyred, you've gone through the martyrdom of I never, ever, ever want to breathe humanly again. I want you, Jesus, to always breathe in my breathing.
I want you, Jesus, to always beat in my heart beating. Do you see how this is different than the devotional life? Devotional life, you pray your prayers, then you do what you want. I mean, St. Augustine says that. Love God and do what you want. What, what our God is asking of us is, I never, ever want you to breathe again, humanly. I want to breathe in your breathing. So this is, what, this is what Jesus says. The sanctity of living in my divine will is divine sanctity and does not admit these weaknesses. If my divine will were subject to this, our justice would have to be without life in our supreme being, which cannot be. If you knew what, at what point our divine justice finds itself in these times, and this is 1927, and if it wanted to unload itself completely over you, you, Louisa, would remain crushed. My will does not want to crush you, Louisa. And God's will does not want to crush us. It wants that the creature have their penalty in part. Also, to make them open their eyes from their great blindness to which they have fallen. Almost all nations live relying on, on debts. If they do not make debts, they cannot live. And in spite of this, they celebrate, they spare themselves nothing, and are making plans of war and curing enormous expense, expenses. Do you yourself not see the great blindness and the madness into which they have fallen? And you, little child, Louisa, you want my justice not to strike them and to be lavished with temporal goods? So you want them to become more blind and more insane? In, and in seeing that all your requests are not granted, you lament and you, in feeling that my divine will has taken its place in all of your soul, leaving you no freedom in anything, and yet you feel the power of the sanctity and the immutability of my divine will. And besides, I have told you many times that the privations of me are nothing other than the voids that my justice is forming in order to strike the peoples. See, it's coming. It's coming. If he, he says, if you only knew what I am going through, can you imagine in China a delicacy are fetuses? That's a delicacy. Do you know what God is going through? In every hospital, uh, it's euthanasia. People don't die in hospitals. They're, they're euthanized. I remember my grandmother, a nun came in. She was a sister. She was holding a syringe, and she looked at me. I'm wearing my collar. This is, I was newly ordained. And she says, it's time, it's time. And I said, it's time for what? She said, it's time. And I said, it's time for what? She says, you have to leave. I said, I'm wearing a collar. This is my grandmother. I can say, she says, you have to leave. And I went, Okay, sister. I said, Graham, I'll see you later. And I left. Graham died that day. And I said, what a wise sister she was. She knew when my grandmother was going to die. She knew all right. So when my mother got sick, she said to me, I don't want to my sister, I don't want to go to the hospital. I don't want to be morphine to death. They will not let me suffer. Suffering is very important. And so what does, she, what does God do? He puts, his, puts my mother in my hands. Boy, did she suffer. She, she got her prayers worth. But I'll tell you honestly, it, it, Jesus, you have to understand, death, we're, uh, John Paul II said that we're in the culture of death. The, the, the food. I, I remember me, I met a mystic in 1976. Jesus and Mary used to appear to her all the time. She was a, a contemplative nun uh, in, in Connecticut. And she said to me, now be careful what you eat. And I said, okay, why? She goes, because they're trying to kill you. I said, sister, who's trying to kill me? She says, the food companies. They don't care. They put anything in the food. And, and you can be careful what you eat. And in 1976, I said, I started reading cans. What do they have in this stuff? It's worse today. It's worse today. I mean, the, there's an explosion of cancer of the of uh, the bladder of the intestines of the pancreas in youth, and they won't say why. 
Well, I think we know why. The devil, the devil doesn't want us here. The devil doesn't want the kingdom to be established. The devil doesn't want people rejoicing in the kingdom. He wants to kill them off. And and uh, uh, my, the, the the doctor came to that doctor came to the house, and I said I'd like to put my mom in uh, hospice. And he says, No, you don't. I said, Well, I I, I need some help. He says, you're not going to go to hospice. And I said, why? He says, look, give your mother six months and that's it. And I went, what do you mean? He says, you put her in hospice, you get another doctor to take care of her. I, I won't take care of her. And he was right. A lot of people that I knew who were sick, not as sick as my mom, died very quickly. It's You have to understand, the culture says don't let anybody suffer. We got to help them. It's uh, if you can take care of the sick in your own home, I would do that. You'll you'll be greatly blessed. But be careful. They say, "None said, be careful what you eat." I said, "Why?" Because they're trying to kill you. I go, "Here's a paranoid nun." But it's true. God God loves us, and the world doesn't. We, Jesus says, "You're not part of the world." You know, it's begin to listen to Jesus. Begin to, you know, uh, understand that it's a, it's not a nice world out there. But the kingdom is coming. It's coming. It's going to be great. Volume 22, July 10th, 1927. My daughter Louisa, you make your rounds. See, this is praying your rounds. For your I love you resounds everywhere for me. From the mountains, from the valleys, from the sea, from the flowering fields, from the sun, from everything. And although hidden in you, Louisa, I repeated, I love you, my daughter. And that's the same thing Jesus is doing with us. He's hidden within us and he's saying to us that he loves us. We have to hear him. But I felt myself cut to the quick when you thought that I did not love you back. This cannot be, my daughter. Not to love in return is not the nature of your Jesus, nor am I able to do so. And if I am, he uses his name there, if I am hidden in you without revealing myself, it is my justice that hides me and wants to punish the peoples with strong scourges. Oh, how many of them shall pour out upon the earth of all kinds, having, uh, because they have, are irritating my justice very much. I hide from you so that it may follow its course. Having said this, he kept silent and disappeared and I was left feeling so bad that I could not stop crying. See, because Louisa knew that mankind was going to be punished. And this is... We're going to see the love that Louisa has for us. We're going... We know the love that Jesus has for us. He's the Son of God. We know the love that Mary has for us, Theotokos, the mother of God. We're going to learn the love of a human who lives the life of Jesus, who lives the life of Mary, who have, who has the great love for us. This is, you, you, you will be astonished uh, when you get to know Louisa. 522, July 6, 1927. Did I just read that? Okay. So if graces are not tamed by me of the prayer done in my divine will, which is universal, Catholic, and divine prayer, Catholic prayer, if the divine justice is not placated and the scourges continue to pour upon earth, it means that that is the will of God. And that instead of making those graces descend, it makes the effects of, of it descend into souls. See, that's us. You have to understand. What's coming upon earth for us, it will be good. This is what this is what Our Lady said. What's coming is going to be good for some, bad for most. How can something be good for some and bad for most? Here it is right here. If these uh, uh, scourges continued, it means the will of God. Instead of making those descends, graces descend on the earth, it makes an effect of it descending into souls. Great blessings are coming to us like you've never seen before. Great 
outpourings of the Holy Spirit are going to come upon the earth, earth as into us as never before. And if one does not obtain much with it, much less shall it be obtained with other prayers not done in my divine will that contain either divine power nor universal strength. So Jesus is saying he wants us to have this universal power, this Catholic power. Everyone, I, you know, I said that earlier today, everyone uh, who's going to be alive, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, Protestant, Jew, they're all going to say, I want to be baptized Catholic. I want this universal life that Adam lost. Everybody's going to know it. That with the illumination of conscience, everyone is going to be aware. But at that point, as Our Lady said, it will be too late. She says, you have to make your decision now. I remember a long time ago, when Our Lady said that in one of her apparitions, I said, well, I'll have a, a moment of saying, oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended. And Our Lady said, no. There will be no time to do that. It's going to end. And, th and then she says, you will be wherever you have wanted to be. And if you're not in the state of grace, you didn't want to be in the state of grace. Heaven is not yours. If you're in the state of grace and you want this life, it's yours. For, for eternity. People think, you know, the, the end of the time is going to be a million, billion years away. That's not what Our Lady of Revelation says. Seventy years ago, she said, time is now coming to an end. This is really exciting. So always be in the state of grace. I mean, really, avoid everything that... See, the devil knows you. God knows you. But the devil knows you. He knows your weaknesses. Avoid, avoid the near occasions of sin. Make a firm purpose of amendment when you make a confession. I mean, it's, it's not just, close your father, no, 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 I'm, I'm fine. No, no, no. You, holiness, saintliness... Goodness, Jesus says, I want more than that for you. Uh, again, wonderful things are right around the corner. And, and Jesus is asking us, he's pleading with us, will, will you be with me? Uh, volume 22nd, August 9th, 1927. That's my mom's birthday. And not only this, but I make you sleep because of my justice, too irritated by the offenses of creatures, may do its course in striking the creatures. And by sleeping, you may not only leave it free in its course, but it may be spared the sorrow of seeing it just, it's, it's just blows over ungrateful world. And again, 1927. This is... We haven't seen anything yet. Uh, just just for, for an idea, picture perfection on earth. Picture complete harmony on earth. Complete, uh, uh, everyone living a universal life, the Catholic life. Uh, everyone being filled with peace, joy, and happiness. That's a glimpse of what's coming. See, everything... Everything we're going to hear creation say I love you. We're going to see creation say I love you. We're going to see it. We're going to experience it. Everything in heaven is so alive. This is really dead. I mean, look at your skin. That's not the way God created you. He created you to be perfectly young as God is perfectly young. We get used to this earth and um, we think, well, this is pretty, this is a nice color of the brown hair. It's a, you know, the temperature is not too bad. No, heaven is perfection. See, Jesus is saying to us, get ready for perfection. So what is he going to do? I, again, I can't get over September 23rd. He's going to say, look up, your redemption is near at hand. Look up and watch what I am going to give to the world. It's, he says, I'm going, to, I'm going to do the greatest show on earth for all the world to see 
And all the saints long for it. Yet we're the ones that are going to experience it. This is, this is tremendous. Volume 22, August 12, 1927. My daughter Louisa, fire, water, fire, blood shall unite together and shall make justice. These are angels of fire, angels of water, angels of blood, angels of light. You have to understand, when Jesus speaks, see this is why this is so wonderful, reading the divine will. Each word that the word of God has spoken to Louisa, each word that Louisa writes is a divine life. It's alive. It's living. Why? It came from the mouth of God. It came from the mouth of Jesus. He calls this, this is what he calls it. He calls this the testament of love. He calls it the testament of the kingdom. And then he says something really interesting. He calls this the gospel of the kingdom. Now, what did Jesus say in Matthew 24? Jesus' words are very, he's, he's God. He's very precise in his words. What did Jesus say in Matthew 24? He says, until the gospel of the kingdom is proclaimed to all the world. Now, do you see why uh, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger said these writings must be, must be given out, must be produced? Until God, the gospel of the kingdom, until that is given to all the world. This is, this is what something that's so, it's so glorious what God is doing. He says, okay, now, wire, water, picture an angel. Fire, picture an angel. Blood, picture an angel. So unite together and shall make justice. Justice shall be established on earth. The angels are coming. All the nations are taking up arms to make war. This irritates divine justice more and disposes the elements to take revenge against them. Therefore, the earth shall pour out fire. The air shall send fountains of water. The wars shall form fountains of human blood in which many shall disappear and cities and regions shall be destroyed. What wickedness! After so many evils of war, they have gone through. They are preparing another one more terrible, and they are trying to move almost the entire world as if it were one single man. Does this not say that sin has entered deep into their bones to the point of transforming their very nature into sin? Oh, how I felt ill in hearing this. And I prayed, Jesus, to put justice aside. Let mercy enter the field. And if he wanted a victim, I, Louisa, was ready as long as the people would be spared. What do you see with Louisa is something that's really astonishing. Jesus suffered the most of any human as and as man, man and God. Mary suffered more than any human next to Jesus. And now you have Louisa who, this is what the church is going to show someday. Louisa is the one who suffered more than anyone next to the Blessed Mother. It's the three that suffered the most. When Louisa was on earth, they called her Louisa la Santa, Louisa the Saint. And when she died, they yelled out, Louisa the Saint. Remember what happened? The blood wasn't going through, no, the blood was pumping through her body, but her heart wasn't working and she wasn't breathing. Her eyes weren't dilated. She never had rigor mortis. And the doctor took four days to say she's dead. The saint has died. Father Bucci says the church is going to recognize Louisa is the saint of the church. The saint. Because as you get to know Louisa, what you're going to, what you're going to see is this isn't holy. This isn't saintly. This isn't good. This is is what the priest puts in the drop of water every day at, at Mass. Drop of water into the chalice filled with wine. Sharing in divinity. It's, I don't possess it. I, God says, I will give you everything that I gave to Louisa if you wish it, if you want it. And when we say yes, he says, keep on reading, keep on reading. Let me see how much you want it. What, what we're going to see with Louisa is this is a new beginning for mankind. All of mankind is going to begin to be given a gift that the the saints, if they could envy in heaven, would envy us. 
we're going to be in the divine will as they are in the divine will on earth as it is in heaven as Jesus says to Louisa it's the fulfillment of the divine will us who are we we're nobody we're nothings yet Jesus says I am waited 6,000 years to give this to mankind and he says to the devil all your lies all your seductions all your hate all your murders come to nothing see Jesus has a better plan and we're in it and he's asking us read all, all he says is read listen to me speak to you he says that to Louisa I will be right beside you I will touch your mind so that you will understand this and I will touch your heart so that you will love it why those two things because he says when you understand it and when you love it you per, you you uh, possess it mutual possession God possessing us and us possessing God it's the kiss of heaven and earth it's the beginning of the life of heaven and earth so I'll end with our prayer let's do our two prayers we forgot to do the prayer to the most holy trinity but the two prayers on the yellow sheet and if we can kneel it would be good if you can't don't worry about it okay ready we'll do the first prayer first in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit for the glorification of the servant of God Luisa Picaretta O most holy trinity Father, Son and Holy Spirit we praise and thank you for the gift of holiness you granted to your faithful servant Luisa Picaretta she lived O Father in your divine will and became under the influence of the Holy Spirit similar to your son who died on the cross due to his obedience she was a victim and a host welcome to you thus contributing to the redemption of mankind her virtues of obedience humility love for Christ and the church urge us to ask you for the gift of her glorification on earth so that your glory may shine and your kingdom of truth justice and love may spread all over the world in the particular charisma of the fiat voluntas tua sequel in shalo and in terra we appeal to her merits to attain from you O most holy trinity the particular grace which we pray to you in the intention of their divine will amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, Our Lady Queen of all Saints, now a prayer for the consecration to the divine will. O oh, adorable and divine will, here I am before the immensity of your light, that your eternal goodness may open to me the doors and make me enter into it to form my life all in you, divine will. Therefore, prostrate before your light, I, the littlest among all creatures, Come, O oh adorable will, into the little group of the first children of your supreme fiat. Prostrate in my nothingness, I beseech and implore your endless light, that it may want to invest me and eclipse everything that does not belong to you in such a way that I may do nothing other than look, comprehend, and live in you, divine will. It will be my life, the center of my intelligence, the enrapture of my heart and of my whole being, in this heart, the human will will no longer have life. I will banish it forever and will form the new Eden of peace, of happiness, and of love. With it, I shall always be happy. I shall have a unique strength and a sanctity that sanctifies everything and brings everything to God. Here, prostrate, I invoke the help of the Sacrosanct Trinity 
that they admit me to live in the cloister of the divine will so as to restore in me the original order of creation just as the creature was created. Celestial Mother, Sovereign Queen of the Divine Fiat, take me by the hand and enclose me in the light of the Divine Will. You will be my guide, my tender mother. You will guard your child and will teach me to live and to maintain myself in the order and the bounds of the Divine Will. Celestial Sovereign, to your heart I entrust my whole being. I will be the tiny little child of the Divine Will. You will teach me the Divine Will and I will be attentive in listening to you. You will lay your blue mantle over me so that the infernal serpent may not dare to penetrate into the sacred Eden to entice me and make me fall into the maze of the human will. Heart of my highest good, Jesus, you will give me your flames that they may burn me, consume me, and nourish me to form in me the life of the supreme will. Saint Joseph, you will be my protector, the custodian of my heart, and will keep the keys of my will in your hands. You will keep my heart jealously, and will never give it to me again, that I may be sure never to go out of the will of God. Garden angel, guard me, defend me, help me in everything, so that my aid and my grow flourishing, and be the call of the whole world into the will of God. Celestial court, come to my help, and I promise you to live always in the divine will. Now let us be blessed by the relic of the true cross. Lord Jesus, we ask that the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us of our human will so that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, that we may be healed spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And for all the wedding rings out there and... Uh, all the the, the uh, uh, what do you call this scapulars we bless them all and may everything that we have here we want to consecrate to Jesus and Mary through little Louisa in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and we'll begin with um, uh, anointing uh, and for anybody who wants an anointing and if everybody else can start Charles we'll have Charles put, start putting stuff together Charles can come up first Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.